Hi everyone, CG Seb here and we are back for another Materializer tutorial. Uh, this will be a more advanced tutorial on the add-on. The goal of today is to make this effect. Uh, this is a destroyed effect that you can use and this is really simple. Uh, you, what you need is just uh, three layers here and uh, we're gonna start. Uh, building the main layers, which is on top, um, something like military color and something pretty rough. Um, because it is a destroyed object, it has a little bit uh, of shifting in the color and uh, the cracked paint nodes that we will use uh, a little bit later after we set up the principal uh, setup. Uh, is gonna actually help a lot with this. So first of all, uh, we don't want to make something too saturated in a color because it is actually old and uh, the color uh, went away a little bit. So that's the, uh, the effect that we want to go for. So that's the basic uh, setup. And now we can go to the front menu on the right, normals, and crack it paint here. Boom. Uh, crack it paint is actually a little bit more complex node than uh, the other node that we have in Fluent Materializer because it has a lot of, uh, of settings, but this is for a uh, really nice result. So we're gonna plug the mask here and now I'm gonna set up the second layer, which is this one and gonna make it metallic, rough, uh, like 0.8. And I want it to be rust, like orange rust. So I'm gonna play with this, make it something around this, okay. Uh, to be done with this layer, I'm gonna also add here in the grunges, I'm gonna add grunge number three and plug the normal here. So we add a little bit of details because if we don't do this, uh, this is really flat. So uh, it had a little bit more details. Uh, it actually is too, 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 too strong. So yeah. Okay, so that's it for this layer It's actually done and now we're gonna play with this. So what this does is actually uh, like a lot of layers, a lot of nodes that we have. We have the seed, which allows you to actually move uh, the texture around and change if you don't like, for example here, I have too many cracks in the same spot, you can just change it and uh, change it when you like it. So let's say we want this, uh, the scale is actually, you know, this, if you know a little bit fluent materializer, it's actually uh, how big those will be. Uh, usually put it to one for this model, it looks fine. Then we have the noise circular based. Uh, this one is actually how circular your hole uh, into the paint will be. Usually I put it to zero because, well, it's a little bit more realistic because it's a little bit more uh, random. Then you have the whole side, so this is pretty uh, self-explanatory. Um, gonna put something like that probably. Yes. Uh, then you have the whole distortion. It's actually the shape of the holes, um, just put it to zero. It's actually good for this type of uh, of mesh. And then you have the whole slope thickness. Uh, when you change this, it actually changed nothing. And the reason for that is because we didn't plug here the normal. So if you plug the normal here, uh, and then you increase this, you will start seeing here the shape is starting from the hole and it's going 
out like that. Um, this is a little bit too strong because the thread here is a little bit too much. So you can reduce this, make it more subtle. All right. So that's for the, the, the first part. And then you have uh, the second part, which is all about the cracks that you have here around the holes. So you need to zoom in a little bit to see more properly. And then use crack is actually, you put it to zero if you don't want cracks around the holes. Uh, and if you want them, to, you put to one. So it's actually zero or one. Uh, crack thickness is actually how uh, destroy it will be. If you want, for example, the paint to uh, go a little bit away, uh, then you can uh, change this. Then you have uh, the scale. So same as usual, you decrease the scale, it will actually make them bigger and you increase it, it will make them smaller. You have the coverage. Coverage is actually starting from each hole. If you increase the up, if you make this like that, and then you can play with it when you are happy. Uh, usually, if you don't make something really, really destroy, you just make it a little bit around, but not too, too much. Right, and then you have the height amount. Uh, this is actually really nice to add some details here. You can add some details here, and uh, this is this is pretty nice. Um, you have here the color, and this color is actually not going to change anything unless you plugged here the color variation map into this map color. And uh, if you move that again, it will not change anything because you need to change the value saturation and U on this node to actually affect uh, the paint. So let me put this back to default value 0.2 and we're gonna play with the U and boom. As you can see, it starts changing colors because we changed the U. So uh, the U is actually a really strong uh, settings, meaning that if you put change just 0.1, so if I put uh, 0.3, it will change really fast the color. So if you want something more subtle, you will have to put, for example, like 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and this is less uh, aggressive than 0.6, for example, because it changed really fast. Uh, saturation is the saturation of the color that you changed here. And U is actually the um, luminosity, so the brightness. You can see here it's bright. Uh, to see where the color is shifted, you can, if you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, in the in Blender, you can actually Control Shift click here two times to plug here, and then you see the color map uh, more easily. So where the white is, it's actually where the paints will be shifted to this color. So uh, for this one, I think it's a little bit too much. So I'm gonna reduce the coverage and put this like that. I'm gonna control shift click on the principal PSDF to go back to the view. All right, so probably we can change this. Um, I'm gonna put 0.6 here because I um, probably 0 0.5, 0 0.58. Yes, less aggressive. And we're gonna start uh, so this is good. All right, so that's the basic color. Uh, we have it a little bit everywhere. I think this is a little bit too strong still. So I'm gonna put this 0.2 to be less aggressive. And now we have all of this. 
with this one that is done. And this layer is actually going to be the dust. So for the dust, you go to imperfections and dust here. Boom. You plug the mask into the mask and you have dust on your object. So that, that's pretty cool, but uh, we want to make it a little bit more random. So I had a viewer on one of my videos that actually told me that we can use a grunge and plug the result here into the amount. And this will affect the dust and make it a little bit more uh, realistic because we can play then with the coverage of this and change I don't know if you can see change the coverage of the of the dust so that's nice um, I usually change the color of the dust so if you change the color here in the dust it will cha not change anything because this color is not plugged here so I usually don't use this color because we can just change it here. So it doesn't make sense to actually change it here, depending on your workflow and how you, you prefer to work. Um, I'd like to make it a little bit more like it is dirt. And uh, if after you made this with a grunge, so let me move this here, um, you can actually add a math node and put it to multiply. And if you put 0.5, you can actually then increase it and it will increase the amount of dust that you have. So that's pretty cool. Um, the scale is actually nice, but for this one, we're gonna need to put 0.5 or something. And uh, this is more uh, realistic. So we have like, pretty nice setup and if we want to see the dust mask actually control shift click control shift click again and the white part is the part that will be uh, affecting the, the dust so uh, that's pretty cool but for now I'm gonna make it a little bit more falling here so how to make the dust go here and fall on the side a little bit you can lower the angle here and you can see here it goes a little bit under and if you change the contrast it will actually change how the gradient goes from here to here so you don't want to put the contrast actually uh, too low because if you put it to zero then you can see uh, the limits will be straight and uh, you can see that the limits will appear so usually put something here like that that's cool okay let's go back to this one and we have a really nice color so now we need a color for this i'm gonna just um, put the same color and click here on the number to make a new material so let's say put corner up and we can change the color to this for example let's apply the same material for this and that boom okay and then you can just change for this one let's say it's plastic so it doesn't have rust you can just unplug this and you can also uh, change the color variation because uh, the U that you put here was for the green. I uh, can put something like that and then let's say for this one we don't want the normal we just want something very subtle and because this is the corners we want to add some imperfections so I'm gonna probably add some scratches Put it here, plug normal here, and then we have scratches. So coverage 0.5 probably, 
and uh, it's pretty nice. So yeah, that was it for uh, today's video. I hope you enjoyed and see you in the next one.